the Gospel Witness, Matthew 28, verse 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The witness of the Acts of the Apostles. Acts 10 verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his names. name. The women were the ones who first saw Jesus risen. And in all the four Gospels, the question was, were they to be believed? Can we believe them? Why should we believe their testimony? And it struck me how much it is to how much we are dependent on witnesses. And for me, the starting point is less the details of the stories, but who told the stories? Could they be, be, be believed? Who then were they? And where were they coming from? To begin with, all of Jesus' followers were absolutely devastated by the crucifixion. Just imagine how they had felt. They had truly believed that with Jesus a new day was about to dawn. They had truly believed that the new time of God would include the humble as well as the desperate and downtrodden people of the world. And they had truly believed that Jesus was the Messiah. 
Then his enemies pounced on him, put him to death. But even worse, the God he had trusted appeared to have let their leader down. Not to mention the added pain of their own denial. Yet suddenly, these same people are tumbling out into the streets of Jerusalem with unrestrained voices exclaiming, The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. What happened? I believe that they had experienced resurrection. The risen Lord had been internalized. The full aliveness of Jesus had risen up in them. And as this story was told, many of their hopes were reborn. And others had their lives turned around. Soon we shall have a Christian-hating Saul stopped in his tracks, raised up to be the apostle of the Gentiles. For the first witnesses, and the later ones, such as Stephen, it was their, their authenticity as witnesses was grounded in the quality of their risen life. So it is with us today. Before anyone is likely to believe what we say about a loving God, about grace, about justice, about loving enemies, about the deep spiritual presence of a holy reality, will all depend on what people see in us. Because you are, we are, the resurrection community of the 21st century. But let's go back to their claim. The Lord has risen. I think it's worth recalling that the actual resurrection of Jesus was never seen by anyone or recorded as a historical event. Unlike the crucifixion, when so many saw it happen, the resurrection was not observed by anybody. I mean Jesus actually rising, getting up and moving. But Jesus did appear, did speak, did converse, did eat with his disciples, women and men, is certainly testified to. But the nature of his bodily resurrection remains shrouded in mystery. But there was a radical change, a rising up within individuals, within the community of disciples. And a radical change in theirs and our understanding of God. No doubting that. But what does this mean for us today? Firstly, the radical change within individuals, which is really timely for us today, is a new ability to hope again. If there's one thing that gets harder as we, as we get older, it's to man maintain the capacity to hope. And it's not just because of what's happening in the world. It's also as we realize that we're not going to fulfill all the dreams in our lifetime. But in the language, and sometimes it sounds quaint, but the language of Paul, even though we were dead through our trespasses and sins, we are brought to life with Christ. Now, This is like a personal Easter. When you can let go of your illusions, when you can let go of your denials, when you can let go of your pretenses, when you can let go of your self-justifications and grasp of the kingdom of justice and peace is still the goal of it all, 
when you're able to accept the fact that in spite of failed hopes, your life is still purposeful, when this, hip when this happens, you and I experience a rising up and have a new ability to hope again. Secondly, there was a radical change within the community of the disciples. We've already alluded to this aspect. But the question remains for us and all communities of faith, after the scandal of so many abuses, so much dirt having come into the open, after churches have been split over questions of sexuality, child abuse, can we rise up again? The remarkable power of God in Christ to reconcile and to be beacons of hope in the world, yes, we can. Yes, we can be true communities of grace, of reconciliation, and being those who exist not just for ourselves, but for others. And then thirdly, the significance of Easter leads to a radical change in our understanding of God. Some still wanted to pin their faith in a God who miraculously intervenes to rescue. Many still look for this kind of God and want to see resurrection this way. But I would ask, how does that differ from those who wanted Jesus to come down from the cross to prove the power of God? No. Jesus himself rejected miraculous intervention. He really did feel that God had abandoned him. That he was all alone and not saved from death. However, his rising was seen as a vindication of all that he had lived and died for. What was true in Jesus, profound love could not be destroyed. If you like, that's miraculous. But what's different now is that the disciples could never think of God in the same way as before because God was now Christ-like. Despite the appalling letdown of the crucifixion, God was actually for us to lift us up and restore hopes for a new world. This, my friends, is a profound advance on how God is to be perceived. Not as a distant being or reality who's over against us because of his holiness and our inherent sinfulness. Even though the first witnesses could not immediately grasp it, the appalling letdown of Jesus' crucifixion was not as senseless and devoid of God as they had supposed. God is for us and for our liberation. For us in the 21st century, this is good to know. Do not look, my friends, for an intervening miracle worker or ask why God allows Syri Syrian massacres or why God can't stop cancer or whatever. Because God is one who suffers with us, who rejoices when we rejoice, who weeps when we weep, who waits while we wait. One who does not abandon us in the long term. One who is with us 
after we have felt abandoned, whose love for us as his children remains with us to our dying day and beyond. Thus Jesus was the pioneer of this new reality of God. The Lord is risen is to say also that God is here. The profound love smashes through defeat and hopelessness. That's the reality to which we witness. Why should we be believed? Because the miracle of Easter happens in us. Amen.